Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks and I make mental health education videos. This video is about when you can and can't take antidepressants with bipolar disorder. We generally do not use antidepressants in bipolar 1 disorder. Why? Because antidepressants are more likely to cause you to switch from depression into mania, thereby triggering mania. Or it can cause you to rapid cycle. That is, you can have a depressed episode that resolves and then quickly returns. And a quick return would be within weeks. So when you hear the term rapid cycling caused by antidepressants, it classically means switching between mania and depression, but it can also refer to rapidly returning episodes, even if that episode was the same as you had before. With bipolar 2 disorder, you get hypomania and depression instead of mania and depression. But the depression in bipolar 2 tends to be longer and more severe. And in general, we believe that people with bipolar 2 disorder can safely take antidepressants, especially if added to a mood stabilizer. And there are some subgroups of people who can tolerate an antidepressant without a mood stabilizer, which is called monotherapy. We don't have a clear picture of what subgroup of people can handle the antidepressants well, but it can be related to how you experience hypomania. And let me explain what I mean by this. There's a couple of ways that hypomania can look. Sometimes you'll experience hypomania as a relief from the depression, but then you'll find that it doesn't last very long. So you celebrate the period of time that you're hypomanic because you have a lot more energy, you're productive, and you feel good about life. But then there's this foreboding fear of the depression that's to come. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, it's like saying winter is coming. Your pre-depression -dep period becomes like fearing the Night King. But for some people, they fear the hypomania because instead of being filled with all this excitement, you can get racing thoughts that are dark and that you can't control. And we know from research that people with bipolar disorder are more anxiety sensitive than people with depression. So when you're hypomanic and your mind is racing, your thoughts can be filled with worry and out of control worry causes a lot of distress. These two different ways your hypomania can manifest affects whether or not you really want to use an antidepressant. If you have the happy hypomania that is typically followed by a long stretch of depression, you may respond better to taking an antidepressant several months after your hypomania resolves to help you get through the long winter. But if you have the more scary hypomania, you may be more sensitive to the antidepressant turning your state into a mixed manic state. With mixed mania, you have a combination of depression and mania occurring at the same time. It's like being agitated and distressed and depressed all at the same time. Here are some risk factors for antidepressants making you more unstable or causing switching. Having bipolar 1 disorder as opposed to bipolar 2. Having mixed features during your depression. Using tricyclic antidepressants like nortriptyline or amitriptyline. These medications are not as commonly used for depression as they used to be, but sometimes another doctor will put you on these medications to treat a pain disorder. Some doctors may even use them to help you sleep. So if you have bipolar disorder, especially bipolar 1 disorder, make sure your other doctors are aware of your diagnosis so that they don't add something that could destabilize you. If you and your doctor decide to start an antidepressant during your depression, you should wait at least six months uh, since your last hypomanic or mixed episode. And this is because you don't want to risk adding the antidepressant while you're still hypomanic. The antidepressant is only to be used when you're purely depressed. One approach to using an antidepressant during your depressed phase is to start the medication and wean off before a hypomanic episode returns. If you're on a mood stabilizer, you may never recognize when you become hypomanic. And this is where it can be very helpful to keep a life chart of your episodes. Track when you're manic and how long it lasted. When were you depressed and how long did it last? Then over time, you can see a pattern of how long you tend to be depressed and when you're manic. And then you and your doctor can plan out your treatment. Here's an example. 
Peggy has bipolar 2 disorder and she tends to have a period of hypomania that lasts about one to two months. And then it usually starts in the spring around March and she'll feel good until around early May. Then she'll start feeling a little dull, neither depressed nor hypomanic, and that will last through the summer. Then around the fall, she'll notice that she doesn't feel depressed, but she's not excited like she was at the beginning of the summer. Then by December, just before the holidays, she crashes and she stays that way throughout the spring and doesn't feel well again until the next summer. Peggy notices that each year the amount of time that she spends depressed seems to get longer and longer, but the hypomania still lasts between one and two months. If we take this information and deconstruct it, we can make medication adjustments to fit her pattern, at least as best we can. We would start with her hypomania. I wouldn't just let her rip through this period because she's told me that she's starting to get to the point where she spends more time feeling irritable and anxious and not sleeping well. So I would treat her hypomania with a mood stabilizer. Let's say I chose aripiprazole. She starts to feel more stable, but still a little bit elevated. And that's okay as long as she's not spinning out of control and she's sleeping well. Once things settle down after about six months, because of her pattern of eventually going into a depression, I would start an antidepressant and add it to her mood stabilizer. If she starts to feel too slowed down, I may remove the mood stabilizer and leave her only on the antidepressant. Together, we would watch for emerging manic symptoms to make sure that the antidepressant isn't destabilizing her. And I would keep the antidepressant on for at least a year based on knowing her pattern of depression lasting for around a year or more. Then after the year mark, she and I will watch out for hypomanic symptoms. Her hypomania looks like lots of anxiety, racing thoughts, and not sleeping well. Before these symptoms come on, I would add back the mood stabilizer and taper off the antidepressant, probably over a couple of months so that it's not too fast. Now, this is not a template that can work for everyone's situation. This is just to illustrate how it can look managing bipolar 2 disorder using a combination of mood stabilizers and antidepressants and responding to your mood state at the time. Treatment for bipolar disorder is often very dynamic and requires changes depending on what's going on at the time. And the best thing you can do to help your treatment is to document your symptoms, keep a, a record of your symptoms, how long they last and what they are. Write it down and take it to your doctor's appointment. This will give your doctor more information about what medications you need. That's it. See you next time.